Uh, so thank you for inviting me to give a talk here about what we're doing in high-speed flows and uh, advanced propulsion from hypersonics uh, and energy to rocket propulsion and uh, exploding stars. Um, just a little bit of background about me. Uh, I've been at UCF for approximately eight years now, and I'm associate professor at the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department. I've been in industry and academia for... Uh, quite a bit of time from my bachelor's day was in indi industry and then moved to uh, grad school and then from there went to academia. I was working at uh, Florida a and Florida State University as a faculty there, then worked at uh, Prano Whitney Meltry Engines, which is Raytheon Technologies now, and also had the, the, the experience of working as a faculty at Old Dominion University and uh, been at UCF now for quite some time. What we've been doing at UCF is leading really creative and technologically crucial research projects in advanced propulsion uh, with uh, about $14.2 million of research that has been brought to UCF. And we've been uh, contributing to a broad impact in terms of hypersonics, space propulsion, power generation, uh, gas turbine engines, jet propulsion, all the way to Supernova Science, which was uh, our published paper in the science paper. Um, uh, so just a highlight of uh, the contributions and the impact that we've done at UCF or uh, that, that have contributed to UCF on the research side. Again, we've been focusing on advanced high speed and hypersonic propulsion and power technologies uh, with a significant amount of funding, about 80 awards at UCF. Uh, within the, the almost eight years uh, period here, and uh, uh, 203 papers with 60 journals, and, and some of them are elite journals like Science, Proceedings in National Academy of Sciences, Nature Scientific Reports, and, and various awards there. Uh, one of the key things that I pride in is that uh, contributing and, and mentoring students. This is the reason why I'm in academia, is essentially um, uh, advance the next generation of scientists and engineers in the field. So we've had uh, about 18 PhD uh, students that graduate from the group and 28 masters and 11 honors and major students. Um, and we're currently advising quite a bit of large group uh, PhDs, masters and honors and major undergraduates and postdocs in the group. And I, I teach propulsion and high-speed aerodynamics uh, and, and fluid mechanics at, at uh, the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department. And uh, in terms of contributions to the community, we've uh, contributed to various uh, um, uh, events and organizations, chairing and, and uh, um, uh, editing some of the proceedings, as well as uh, contributions to UCF internally um, and, and organizations for reviews as in proposals and papers and such. So uh, uh, overall, uh, the, uh, the research portfolio focuses, or at least our lab focuses on hypersonics and supersonic uh, high-speed flows, both internal and external aerodynamics. Um, we focus also on uh, next generation advanced uh, variable cycle engines. It's primarily in the uh, ITAR, uh, my lab is 100% ITAR lab, uh, so I can't talk a lot of details about it here, but, uh, but in reality, we're, we're pushing the boundaries of physics in some of these uh, uh, propulsion systems. Um, we leverage quite a bit of high-speed uh, turbulence, uh, which is utilized in uh, military aircrafts, as you can see right here, and uh, uh, also commercial aircrafts. We're the leading lab in, in uh, detonations and rotating detonation engines, which I'll show examples there. Uh, and and uh, we've one of the discoveries that we've made is published in Science, and another one is in PNAS. Um, as, as experimentalists, we know what we want to measure, so we develop actual sensors for, um, for measuring certain quantities that we want to establish there. And uh, we're also one of the leading labs in rotating detonation rocket engines, both for propulsion and power generation. It's a new uh, type of engine that is going to re revolutionize um, uh, propulsion and power type engines altogether. And then we utilize quite a bit of advanced uh, laser, uh, high speed uh, um, advanced laser diagnostics uh, and, and cameras, megahertz and gigahertz type of measurements. Uh, and coupled with simulations, physics-based simulations, um, and uh, artificial intelligence, neural network 
type of uh, analyses that we apply uh, and statistical representations for those. So that's in a broad sense. Um, I wanted to highlight key things that we've been working on in our lab, which one of them is a defining a new universal mechanism for terrestrial and astrophysics explosions. And it's driven by fluid mechanics, i.e. turbulence specifically. So you think uh, of a typical candle-like flame, it's, a, it's, it's your, your weak heat uh, energy release that is coming out of that, that flame. Uh, but if you, what, what we discovered is if you perturb it, uh, essentially the same mechanism as you steer your creamer in your coffee, if you perturb it enough, you could actually establish compressibility. And this was a unique aspect. It was, it was considered not possible before, but if you perturb it, you could wrinkle that reaction and extract significant amount of energy. And that's one of the key mechanisms that we are utilizing in a lot of our, our uh, explorations is how do I maximize my energy release using the, um, the fluid mechanics or the turbulence to drive this, which is uh, compressibility there. So to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here, so to show you a typical deflagration, which is like your candle flame, uh, you have this, um, uh, this, this uh, explosion that would occur, and then you have a detonation, which is you become compressible in that sense. So uh, I will play it and you will see. So this is, this is an intense explosion, as you probably heard as well, uh, but this is actually still weak. You're not utilizing the extent of energy that is present there. Here's what it's, uh, an example of a detonation where you actually become compressible through turbulence mixing and you induce this uh, detonation event. Oh. So you probably experienced this. This is a detonation, which is that first blast that you've seen there that's moving at about Mach 5, five times the speed of sound. And essentially you, you uh, got the mixture to become compressible and accelerate at these speeds. So this was a key finding that we've had. We've uh, related it to a missing mechanism related to supernova explosions, one of the most intense explosions known to humankind. And uh, the key thing that has always been uh, missing is you could have a, a, a reaction for a supernova that's driven by carbon oxygen uh, emanating from a decaying star. And then, um, and then you could have this intense detonation, but there was a missing link of how does it take it from this point to this point. And that's one of the key things that we've created in the lab, that environment uh, to induce a, uh, the uh, turbulence induced compressibility and, and detonation that way. And we've partnered with collaborators on, on direct numerical simulations of this and we published a science paper on it. Now, this is on the fundamental side, but how do you take it and actually apply it to a system where, as I mentioned before, is taking the energy release uh, that you could establish that strong energy and actually now controlling it in an engine. That explosion that we've seen right here, how do you take it and actually utilizing it in an engine? And that's what we've been working on uh, to achieve uh, Mach 5 flight, so i.e. 30 minute flight from Europe to London. Um, it's also related to uh, safety as, as was experienced in about a year and a half with the Beirut uh, Lebanon explosion, uh, where we've all seen it in the news where it completely destructed the city entirely with that detonation. It primarily started with a deflagration and you transition to a detonation through turbulence induction. And we've created in the lab a environment like that where we show you could actually produce that strong detonation in an unconfined form, which has always been hypothesized as not possible. So uh, the goal is to leverage that energy release. So we've uh, uh, last year uh, uh, published a Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences on a key discovery that we've been working on for six years is how to control a stabilized detonation, that energy release to control it for hypersonic travel. And, and that would propel a vehicle to Mach 6 to Mach 17. Uh, this was a, a world first in terms of a experimental configuration that does show this, and we're actually, actually working on a demonstrator engine with this. Uh, we used a unique hyper-react facility. It's actually the, the only re hyper, uh, reacting 
high Mach number facility, free jet type facility that could run up to a minute of, uh, and above in terms of runtime at high Mach number conditions. Uh, and this is, it's pretty intense facility. It will actually shake your organs uh, if, if you're by it, but we typically run it remotely. Uh, but the goal there is that we were shown, it, it was always shown uh, in a simulation that it's possible, but experimentally, various experiments failed. Uh, by optimizing the right mixing, the boundary conditions, we were able to stabilize it by understanding the fundamentals of how the detonation actually works. And this was uh, featured throughout through uh, 80 news media articles, and it was the top one uh, uh, news for uh, from uh, UCF's top 10 use of, uh, research stories in 2021. I always get the question, um, uh, well, how, how would a hypersonic vehicle look like from the inside? I would uh, I would actually suggest the Virgin Galactic if it's up to me. That that's a, a good looking cabin if you were to fly on something like this. Um, but we've been uh, also working on scramjets and ramjet propulsion, leveraging again the same turbulence understanding and compressibility. We're redefining the Mach number. Uh, Mach number is referred to as the speed of sound to uh, sorry speed the speed of flight or the flow relative to the speed of sound. But we're defining that differently now, given the uh, uh, co uh, compressibility that is driven by turbulence. And that is taken to systems like ramjets and scramjet propulsion that we're exploring there. And I can't get into the details of what we're doing there, but in a broad sense, that's what we're doing here. And the other thing is capitalizing on that high energy release. So you have these different... Uh, uh, mechanisms of, of uh, reactions that are kind of slow in, in some of these propulsion systems. So you have an example at the top here where you get more of a fireworks type of reaction, and that's very, very slow, uh, although it, it looks exciting, but it's very slow for a high-speed, high-mock type of flow, uh, Mach 5 and above, that's, that's just too slow. So we're, we're establishing these micro explosions to induce uh, intense reactions there. And again, running in these, uh, this hypersonic uh, facility that we have. Um, one of the key things that we've established at UCF is the first uh, demonstration of a hydrogen oxygen rotating detonation rocket engine. Uh, I wanna highlight hydrogen oxygen is one of the unique mixtures that you could get significant thrust and specific impulse from a rocket engine. It's actually the one of the highly sought out mixtures, uh, primarily because also you could harvest hydrogen by breaking down water into hydrogen oxygen. So it's sustainable as well as, you know, you could recover it from surfaces like Mars and such. Uh, plus it, it produces the high performance uh, um, engines in a sense. Um, it was deemed as uh, the UCF rocket engine, and it was the world's first impossible rotating detonation engine to run off hy hydrogen oxygen. Even NASA named, noted that it was near impossible to actually achieve this. But we demonstrated that it works, and we could actually throttle the engine at different uh, conditions as well. Uh, one of the things that we pride on uh, that, uh, that we had uh, uh, students actually spin off to companies, Halo Engines, which Last week, they, uh, they won the first prize of the UCF Technology Venture Symposium. So uh, they're, they're taking off there with this technology. And this has been supported by the Air Force and the Space Force heavily to take this to the next level. Uh, we've been working as part of a consortium of this. Uh, one of the key things that we've been working on is obviously liquid-based propellants for rocket engines. Uh, for using that same technology, which is that detonation that I mentioned to release that intense energy, makes rockets cheaper, high performing, reduces your weight and cost overall. Uh, this is um, uh, active work where we actually achieved a uh, 250 uh, uh, seconds of uh, a specific impulse. Uh, and that is, is a, a key number when you compare uh, rocket propellant, liquid-based rocket propellant to, let's say, the Merlin engine to, uh, that, that SpaceX uses for the Falcon 9, which gives you about 282. So we're actually very, very close to where this becomes a realizable uh, system. 
And uh, using that space uh, rocket science that we've that established in, in hypersonics research, we capitalize on it for uh, power generation because it's the same type of technology where if you could release that energy, that's the one key thing that we're after, that heat energy, then we could uh, produce cleaner systems, high performing systems, something like this where you get a reactor that is very dirty, that produces your electricity. Uh, we could actually, using that same technology, produce something that is very clean, as you could see right here. So essentially, we're using that, that same knowledge into producing those. And I want to end with the uh, uh, overall acknowledgement to the UCF leadership, uh, the, the dean, the chair, the, the, the um, college, the department, the research office, provost, president, and all the support team at UCF, the, and uh, various collaborators that we worked on. Uh, we've had the pleasure with working and, and graduating quite a bit of uh, uh, students from our group. And we had two spin-off companies from those uh, that students have been leading, Halo Engines and Hyperdrive. And uh, we look forward uh, more for students working actively in our group and, and growing in that sense. And um, we also want to acknowledge all our sponsorship. And with that, I will take any questions you have.